Welcome to FMTrain.tv where every once in a while. <laughs> yes, Ruben, that, I do like that graphic. It's good. So welcome to FMTrain.tv where every day, every week, there's all great FileMaker stuff going on. Of course, I say every day, every week. And then what happens is probably we're going to tell you about what days that's not applicable, right? So if I hit the button over here. Uh, I'm going to bring up the upcoming broadcast schedule. If I hit the button, we'll see if it works. Yes, it works great. So we have uh, Mondays and Tuesdays next week. So there's no Nick next week. We got Monday and Tuesday with the latest in Wolfpack action, right? So that's the add-on kind of catalog thing that we created. Some guy goes, hey, we have a product called Wolfpack. You might be confusing with us. I said, well, that's great, but you can talk to the college university whose name is Wolfpack about your trademark infringement if you have a problem. Uh, I can't remember what, uh, what you never, oh, I, Topcat's here. I have to stay strictly on topic or he'll yell at me. So yes. Real quick, uh, a lot of people are coming in. Uh, I want to add, uh, today is an open Q&A day. At some point, Andy Lacates, I suspect, will join us. Um, but I want to handle some low-hanging uh, news and announcements on the front end before we get to there. Real quick, upcoming uh, the latest news. So let's cover that real quick. Um, I got a I got an email from Claire said, "Hey, what's a, um, well?" They said a lot of stuff, but I will uh, I'll get to that in one second. So what we have is we go to fmstartingpoint.com, brings this up, and you have this F, the free CRM website that we have. We have the current versions, just so you know, we've locked in the light versions kind of finalized. It's X11, but it's the, the final one. Um, there is a beta of the, tw it's, I'm not on this list right here, but it's a beta of the 2022 standard and enhanced version. So this is the full version. We released it. We made some bug fixes to it. It looks like it's going to be good. So we've asked the engineer involved with that. His name's John to kick out the uh the australia english version the uk english version and the uh eu uk and australia version so it's like four flavors of english they all speak slightly different versions of english so that way it's localized for you ideally in ideal world claris would finish their uh their serialization of the product and we could program programmatically do this with one version right but they kind of won't finish that feature. Um, and so we're stuck here uh, localizing things the hard way, right? So it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, oh, one note on the starting point since you brought this up. You're talking about something else, but real quick on starting point. On 2022 standard version, we switched to using UUIDs, which means that if you take the CRM, our standard 2022 CRM, it'll go right into uh, mirror sync and synchronize, no problem. Right, because it uses the UUIDs, it doesn't use normal serial numbers. Um, so I'm going to hold that question. You folks should ask these questions as we get to them. Uh, if Andy shows up in a little bit, we will do that. So the the new version of Starting Point, as we've uh, we've talked with Nick about this a little bit. Um, so here is the 22. Let me see where'd it go. It's over here. So this is the 22 light version right here. If I pop it up. Um, once again, an FMP12 file is a FileMaker platform file. Um, and so this is the standard version right here, it's, or the light version, and it's designed to be more simple, more basic. We have these kind of tabs up here that are hanging out up here. Um, they, you could outline the button if you wanted to, but the idea was to make it more simple, right? And then if you come over to the, the standard version, we open it up. Uh, what you'll see is that you get the context, you have a more sophisticated graphic. There is no way to do this graphic. It's a combination, it's once again, it's one of Nick's like crazy tricks. So it's a Nick crazy trick that's in here. It's a combination of a slide control and button bar, right? Slide control and button bar in one place. And so it's, it's, it's a total hack. It's a total hack by Nick. No, Nick, we're talking no, about not. you. Yes? No, it's not the hack. It has been designed that way. That's why we have all those functions about their slide and about their, you know, it's uh, he has been designed. It's not from a the hack. Day. I argue that it's a hack and that Claire should make has been, the button can explain, bar that doesn't suck. Yeah. I, wow. I, can, I can explain why. I can explain, I, I can explain why. So you got 28 you have, seconds to explain why. Okay, explain why. Yeah, okay no, very simple. Um, the, the, the decision was, what are we doing with the tab control dialog? Mm -hmm. People say we are not going to touch that anywhere, any anytime soon in the history of humanity. So the tab control we have today is the one we have. No control whatsoever 
no uh, uh, icons in the buttons, and no, absolutely no control. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very basic tab control. Okay, so the the the, the idea was let's build the button bars and the slide control to work together in concert, and then we can replace the tab control by tab slide control, right? So that was the idea. And that's why they introduced all those functions, the get uh, current tab, the get target tab, you know, the triggers mm -hmm. and all of those things, right? So that's why. So it's right. not well, I, hack. I argue it's a hack because it's way more complicated than it should be. It should be very simple. It is, it is. So uh, Ruben says, awesome. So in Claire's, uh, okay, that's another, I'm gonna save that till we get to the Andy LaCates. Uh, at Andy LaCates, it's in studio now. Really? All right. Well, if Andy LaCates says it's in studio now, then we'll have to demonstrate that. We're looking forward to that. So Andy's not here yet. I guess he will be here at some point. So it's not a hack. It's mandatory. So, yeah. So the tab controls and button bars, mixing um, objects together to try to kind of compensate for old UI issues. So that's kind of what this is right here. So that's the difference. That's why we had to ship a light version of our CRM versus a full version because one gave you the rich professionalism that people expected. And the other one was the one that you have to learn with the training wheels one, right? So that's the training wheels versions. So let me go in here and play with this a little bit. So this is the spreadsheet. And then we got this. Hey, Andy, how are you? Doing great, how are you doing? We are here. Did you just say that primary keys are actually in here now? I'm led to believe that, Richard. I will confess I haven't played with them yet. I, there no, may we be neither have I, so I'm trying to do it right now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, uh, everyone freeze. Here it is. This is a list of things you can add. A short text, a long text. Short and long text is a styling issue. It's just a text field, right? Number, drop down as a control style, checkbox, single, ch single choice, yeah. Date, time, timestamp, date, phone, signature, currency, money. Okay. User, address, attachment. I don't know where it's at. Is it hiding as a in here? Um, it may be. I'm, I'm trying to get to um, the uh, release notes from our last uh, update or two, Richard. Re but, um... Release notes are from November 1. I don't have a – I was thinking there might be a new fresh one, but I. it's November 1. So the question comes up. Uh, we open, you know, like these open Q&As are for like any kind of question you have about the Claire's platform. Since we have Andrew here, who's not, he's kind of a spokesman for Claris, but not really an official spokesman for Claris. If he was, he'd be wearing a shirt and tie, right? He'd be all official. <laughs> um, if you want to ask him questions, but I would ask people to be kind of reasonably nice. Um, if you want to ask a leading question, that's, that's fine. But just understand that he can bite back and he does bite back, right? So, uh so, the, so I, I think Unlikely. the primary key thing is coming, right? I think if it's not here, it should be. You know, I, I, that may be true. I'm, I'm looking at the release notes from November 1 and not seeing it there. So, yeah, I may have just let one slip. But, uh, no, that's def definitely coming. Um, and um, the, the the ID, the field that comes out of Mongo is, is different than the UUIDs that we're typically used to. But uh, we should get a unique row. Um, it, it's, it's a combination of a hash from the contents of the row with a, some sort of date timestamp in the hash as assault and um so it should be reasonably unique um and useful for us to start building relationships on the file micro side so. yeah really really important that we have that because i've built it without that and, it, and i had to go back i literally had to go back to my filemaker 2 pro 2 days to figure out how to make it work it was that uh backwards so that's cool all right i, cool. I did i think i think it's wrapped up and predicated around getting to uh value lists that can be generated dynamically that was sort of the, the you know use case focus to to get the keys in there and make them work but i believe they'll be more useful broadly i did hear a rumor talking to somebody internally that we we uh, uh typed the uh the, the field to a number or something like that and we may need to fix for that if that's a problem so but uh, i think next release you'll you'll see that in there is my understanding well it's about every three weeks so if they're on track it could be mm -hmm. this coming monday or tuesday next week although we're heading into things you guys are off next week right apple's off next week apple is off free? off next week um so yeah things will slow down for us a little bit um so i wouldn't expect any major releases next week because we want to make sure the whole support staff is here 
for me, it's a week to play with the product, right? Because I get a little free time. Yeah, uh, so yeah I'm you're, you're not, to not committed to meetings, which is great, right? Yeah, exactly. So, excellent. Well, there's a lot of people here, uh, a broad variety of developers. You folks have questions about the platform. You really need to ask them because this is your big chance, right? So I know that we have a lot of people, about a, about 20% of the people watch live, the other 80%. If you're watching this as a recording, you should have come to the live event. That way you can ask the questions in real time right very 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 important one of the things that did come up and i was uh, people were talking about this and i don't have they said anything more about this i mean we have the two different platforms have they talked any more about the bi-directional kind of component between fmp12 and claris i mean it's kind of a one-way migration right now have they thought any more about that i i don't think it's a big deal yet but as soon as people really start using the product i mean like really mm -hmm. using the platform and they're using both and they're going to get into this like, well, I can't go backwards thing. Right. So. Um, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. And, you know, I think. Um, boy, where to start with that? You know, we, we, we're, we're keeping FileMaker on, on the you know path to, you know, improving it and keep making it, you know, still a platform that you can believe in and trust. And we got an update coming on that real soon. You know, it's coming. Um, it won't be next week because we're on the holiday, but you can keep your eyes peeled for emails uh, the week after. Um, well, so well, you know. the other developers have been all been demoing the damn thing, right? They've been demoing the uh, transactions, right? In and the new version. We've been demoing them. I got to talk I, to them if they've been doing that. Giving our trade oh, secrets out early. What are you talking no, about? <laughs> I, I listen. I I I said specifically. I said, are you sure? And they go, well, they demonstrated at Auto Enter, and so it was dem demonstrated here last week. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to know anything about this because I'm gonna get a nasty note from Claris saying that we're yeah, talking I gotta talk to somebody what? yeah God, that's no, terrible they've been demonstrating no, no, it's, it's fine. transactions I mean, kind he, of he, the big one right yeah pete nelson talked about it back in april when we presented that you know we we are committed to filemaker we know that the transition isn't you know there are a lot of blockers and a lot of reasons why it's just not an easy switch it's like going from filemaker six to seven right and we want to make it so that Customers have, you know, the, the platform that they trust to run their businesses on and their careers are based on uh, while we, you know, get things worked out. And when people are ready, they can move. So um, uh, we're continuing to advance FileMaker. I think Rick was talking about it, you know, in a recent presentation and uh, saying exactly that. Uh, the, the transactions, I think, are probably the standout feature. There's some other things in there as well that go to, um, you know, performance and stability, more bug fixes, lots of those. I heard rumors uh, about server being server way side. faster. I heard rumors that server being way faster, but I haven't, you know, got out the stopwatch on that yet, right? And people yeah, were asking. Yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll see how the testing bears out. Um, I've heard some positive notes that have come out of early testing. Um, it should be better. And um, there's also some more administration functionality. There are some things that we took away from 16 to 17 on the admin. Oh, console. yeah, that was a nightmare. Yes, I remember that. So we get, some, some people are looking for some of those features to be back in the GUI, and I think some of that is coming back as well. Um, so, yeah, overall, it's going to be great uh, for 19 upgrade, and, and everyone you know should want to get current on it. So look for that one after the holidays. We're, we're not going to launch while, we're, while, while most of the staff is away. So. On Thanksgiving break, yeah, exactly. So real okay. quick, I'm going to do a quick drag and drop here on a FileMaker FMP12 file into the current version of Claris Pro. And you folks will see this go through the process here. It creates a new file. Um, I think it's admin, I think no password, right? Yeah, there we go. And it's going to go through this conversion, then we end up with a Claris file. Uh, questions, people are typing questions. Please ask your questions, right? So. Question. Um, several weeks ago, someone, I forget who, discovered there was a memory issue. Setting a field with the first few characters of a large string the same amount of storage as the original string has this been fixed if not will it be soon um i do not know that issue specifically that a, um to answer it with confidence that right question here. is that a pro question we're talking about pro or i'm assuming that's, pro. that's from Stu. so Stu. Stu is our retired navy guy he won't tell us what he did in the navy but it was double triple secret oh. no seriously submarines guns uh, uh, my my uncle was an early nuke sub program officer, so uh, maybe Stu and I should talk sometime. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, he'll talk uh, offline, but he doesn't I, do it publicly. But yeah, no, he's. Uh, of course, of course. <laughs> it's good to meet you, Stu. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that one. I, I'm assuming it's in pro, but based on the question, um, and, and that one just has not gotten to my radar. So I apologize. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't heard that one either. Canberra's there. He's retired. Shoot, Canberra's retired from uh, Los, was that Los? No, Sandia Labs down in uh, New Mexico. And you've talked to them before, haven't you, Andy? I think you've talked to them. Uh, yeah, I, I used to be out and about uh, with the suitcase all the time. Uh, I miss uh, being on the road with uh, customers as much as I used to be. But um, I'm seeing Ruben's question about are there plans to get Claris into the enterprise businesses since no code and low code is a big thing over there. Yeah, that, that's an interesting statement. I, I think we believe that too. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if Brad remarked on this uh, in Sweden this past week because I, I wasn't there to see his presentation. I'm looking forward to the recordings. I need that recording um, if you get it. I need that recording if you get it, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm dying to hear it. My, my my, we can talk about it a little bit, but my um, the read readouts I've heard of the the engage you event was amazing, um, which I would expect. Uh, but I know that one of the conversations we've had uh, with Brad and, and others, you know, publicly is that you know as a community of developers, we've been kind of the stalwart you know trailblazers of low code for thirty years, right? And we've been doing this when no one got respect doing it, right? And how many of us have hid servers under the table or done what we need to do to get the platform oh, yeah. into a business? Um, but now, you know, it's like the rest of the world is catching up and get it. And and, and we can have pride to to have, uh, you know, blaze that trail and, and know this stuff better than anybody else and having the tool set that does more than anybody else. So to the question, Ruben, yeah, I think we are in enterprise already. We're in, you know, 95% of the Fortune 100 companies at a departmental level. Um, there are some things that when enterprise companies are currently looking at the low code market space, if you follow the analysts, um, they have a different angle on low code. And it starts with governance and it starts with enabling business developers to essentially collaborate. Uh, it, it's a different domain than what we, you know, the, the problem solving space that we tackle, um, we meaning our platform by you. Um, but we, fir we firmly believe that the utility for enterprises is, is extremely big. Um, but, you know, our, our, our core ethos is about enabling technologies to small and mid-market businesses that are otherwise just out of scope and out of, you know, financial range for them. And so we're not going to lose focus on that. Uh, but do we think that there's room for this, this platform to go up market to bigger companies? Yeah, we do. We absolutely believe that. By the way, I've been getting some rant. I, I will just, I'm going to throw you a softball. So this is like one, like one of those political softballs when we <laughs> wink at each other. Here's the softball. Okay. Hey, I've been getting okay. emails from Clara saying that, oh my gosh, the, the freemium thing is coming and I should sign up to be a first adopter of freemium. Which I've been seriously getting mar marketing emails about that, right? And those yep. are going out to everyone. It's not a Richard thing. So would you like to say anything about that? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we emailed you first, Richard, because it is. A Richard <laughs> <favorite>. <laughs> no, I, I, the, I think I, I, most people here have got that question, too. Right. Other people have got that email, too. Would you like to be part yeah, of you know, I, I think the, 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 the notion behind free access to the platform? And I, I'll, I'll use that language instead of freemium, Richard, because freemium is a business model. It's a strategy, right? Google it. There's no thing that's a product that's freemium. Um, it really is just, do you want to get access to the Claris platform for free? Would that be helpful uh, to investigate the platform, to try it, to kick the tires, to find out what works, to find out what doesn't and tell us what doesn't so we can make it better? Um, you know, we, historically... We come from a model in, in the 90s where, you know, people would buy software, you'd have a window for trial, but they would time out after a while. And in the modern era, that's just not normal, right? People want to try software, you know, find value in it. When you get to the point where you've discovered the value and you're ready to, you know, give your credit card or whatever it is and pay for uh, deployment and sharing with others or, or, you know, removing any limits, then you do. So um, we, we want to get in that same space. And we know that in this transitionary period where, We've got a FileMaker customer base that's looking at this Claris platform. You know, we've got a, a lot of customers that have paid to get on board. They believe in the future and want to want to try it. But we know other people want to just try it first, right? And so, yeah, it's coming. We want to make free available. I think one of the four pillars, or I think he called them North Stars, that Pete presented back in April was remove friction to adoption. Um, you know, for the first phase of free, we will focus on you. We will focus on existing customers who want to get a taste of what the Claris platform is, what Studio can do, get fingers on keyboard. It's important to experience, but ultimately it's about growing the community. When we have it out there and suddenly Richard can build content and provide it over the, the internet and anyone can use it. There's no one that can't use it because they have free access to the platform. Then it only makes the value that Richard's providing here or, or that anybody on the audience you know, can provide better. So 
Yeah, free free is coming soon. And um, if you want to sign up, please do. I think Rosemary is giving you the link, Richard, or whatever. But if not, I can dig it up and make sure we we share it around here. Yeah, we'll make sure we share it. I just wanted to make sure that other people were seeing that because I saw it and I'm like looking at, you know, and it, it says it's coming soon. I think coming soon is a little bit of a mm, depends what soon means. But yeah, it is coming. It's coming enough that Clarice is shooting emails out about it. Um, mm hmm. So cool. Well, that's where are we? Great. November. I mean, this is this is a in in the few months time frame. This is yeah, not this in is, years time frame. Yeah, it's a few months time frame. And I and here's the thing with this is this. I'm gonna draw. Let me draw. Well, let me just do this real quick for people. So this is. I'm gonna pop up my calendar real quick. So if we look at November, we're already like most of the way through November. Claris is off this week for the most part. Then there's a week there, and then if we flip forward, they're off somewhere. Like, are you take you guys start off on the 23rd or whatever, right? So, yeah, I don't even know, but probably that's when probably around right there. Then you're off. You guys have two weeks off, so December's only three weeks. So, the, the basically, if, if you're on the if you're an airplane on the runway going down the runway taking off, that 80 percent of the runway is behind you now. <laughs> Right. So we're not I mean, there's not a lot of runway left before the end of the year. The year is almost over. Right. Pretty soon people are going to be sticking Christmas trees up and crap like that. It's already happening at Walmart and stores. It's all Christmas all the time. So, yeah. Cool. It, all right. It's true. Apple does have the holidays there, but but we're well into the work on it, Richard, and, and excited to get it out there as soon as we can. Um, and, and, you know, we'll do it with with you all so you can test it and tell us everything that's wrong with it that we can fix. And we will. Right. So. Oh. You know, right now, um, we've got a relatively constrained community of people that are testing it in a very limited fashion um, and not necessarily fully deploying yet. So, you know, you, you get feedback that's good. Like I saw Wim's presentation at FimDisc last week. And it was amazing. Right. He really dug into uh, the model of how the um, how studio interacts with Pro and some of the security impl impl implications that are there. Um, that's great feedback, right? Our engineers need to see that, need to understand it in, in terms of uh, where the blockers are and what works and what doesn't. Uh, the more we can get it out into your hands and you guys can, you know, cheer about some things and bark and scream about others, that's great. We'll, we'll make it better. So. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, that's good news. Yeah, now Wim always does a great job with presenta uh, presentations. That's uh, excellent. So, um, cool. He has a uh, habit of doing that. <laughs> yeah. And then I got the Discord thread up here on screen so we can see that. Were there other questions here that went flying by? Uh, yes, there is. Yeah. I think kind of questions from Christian Schmitz. I think they're questions. I'm not sure if they're questions or commentary. Um, it would be handy if the migration utility could update a Claris file based on an FMP file. Data plus security from Claris file and the new layout slash scripts from the FMP file. Great, uh, great commentary. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Yeah, it's it's a little below the give Stu some beers. Let's see, uh, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Yeah, so I think one of the things that people ask about is, the, you know, the, the low code market. And, and when you go and, and say, show me the low code leaders, Claris is not even listed, right? So part of that is, you know, generating some momentum and getting listed with some of these places, I guess, to a degree, right? Andy, I mean, is that part of your strategy, I guess, would be? Because... Like if I do a repeat for, that question, exactly. if I do a search for like, sure if I go to, if I go to a, in the problem, it's all like cooked up here. If I say low code software, and I just type and hit that return, I'm going to get a bunch of paid mm -hmm. ads, right? Which is one thing we talked about yep. uh, SEO. Sure. The day. This is probably a cooked up BS thing right here. Someone paid to be on this list, but somewhere in here, like yeah. G, is it G2, is it G2? One of the ones that we were messing with at one point, Claris was. So yeah, yeah. Here's the thing on low code. Low code is is um, it's a really crappy category, right? It, it doesn't um, really describe anything in terms of value delivered to the customer. Uh, there's the inference that with low code you're, you're coding less. I, I don't know. Um, we we did a fair amount of investment in low code and uh, SEO and all that good stuff for a while and got ourselves into the generally top 10 of low code results in, in Google. Yeah, we are. You're on this right it. here with G2. You're here. This is awesome. It's on screen. Yeah, G2 has been, and, and G2 is up to customers, right? It's up to y'all to go in there and vote and decide that you like our platform and, and you know, that we get represented the way we are. And that's been great. We, we've been generally pretty, pretty solid in G2 in, in different categorizations. But low code itself, um, we hear a consistent, you know, um, refrain from our customer base that it just it's unsatisfying it just no no developer wants to be called low code right yeah um, and 
you know, rapid app development. Okay. That says something about what you can do with this platform. Um, low code implies that you can do less. And, and that's further exacerbated by the low code platforms that do do less, right? There's a lot of, you know, spreadsheet in the cloud kind of low code platforms that they're good for collaboration on some basic data, but you can't do anything like you can do with ours. So to kind of lump ourselves into it, that is very confusing to, to customers. So I, I think we're a little less enchanted well, with trying to win low it's, code. As it's a low code and it's also, we, we made a video about this. I remember you and I talked about this like a, almost a year ago. It's low code and it's pro code in one kind of platform. It really is, right? It, it really covers a span there. Um, and so, yeah, you're right. I, I also, you know, borrowed from you, Richard, you know, a couple of years ago now, I think, because um, I think you said you really eloquently uh, had a beautiful couple minute video that's that's out there on the web talking about, you know, if you're a customer and you're looking for for this kind of software, what you need is a professional grade toolkit, you know, yes. a low code, maybe I can call it, right? But it's that combination of, yeah, maybe we're low code in, in terms of, you know, rapid app development, but uh, this is low code for pros. Like it's that our developers are professional. All right, other- I'm seeing the uh, comment by, by, by Canberra there on low code and, and we agree. Uh, we think that the value that we provide that our developers provide is different. So I, I think in, in the messaging that, you know, Brad and, and we've been really centering around, it is about a, a very developer centric message that goes to whether it's continuous improvement or rapid app development. Uh, it starts with the developers that we have in this community. So ho hopefully we're getting to, a, I don't know, a better messaging center there. But. Great. Uh, Ruben says, yeah, it's, it's, uh, so Ruben says that the Oracle Apex has a big lead in the uh, in the uh, enterprise area, SAP app for everyone. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, I don't. It's your, so Ruben. What's interesting about our our platform is, I mean, if you really look at low code, it bifurcates pretty quickly into relatively simple low end. I'll call it uh, low code, which is you know really hyper easy but it's largely about using the cloud to get data into a collaborative space in a spreadsheet-like format, and then maybe put some form stuff around it. Not, not coincidentally, not unlike the stuff that we're doing with Studio, right? Because it's a great entry point for customers to start collaborating with data. From there, you start building to a problem-solving mentality, right? And we want that journey to be available on our platform, right? But it, the other bifurcation is, is on the enterprise side. You see a lot of folks that, um, are building, you know, it's really rapid app development, but it ends up being code generative. And the, the central thesis is IT governance in enterprise. And uh, that's great, uh, but our, our sort of power center goes to the problem solving domain that we have, that, that, you know, you guys are out there solving for deep problems, big, valuable problems in business. And uh, it's, it's challenging to articulate sometimes, but that's different than the low end stuff. And it's different than, you know, solving exclusively for sort of uh, classic enterprise IT constraint. The good news is right now in enterprise, uh, businesses are driving the tech decisions more and more, right? The IT uh, sort of power equation is shifting and changing because they have to facilitate and be more agile uh, in the modern era. So we think there's tremendous opportunity for this platform. All right. I like that answer and I appreciate you uh, providing that. All right. Other questions that we have, uh, Margaret, yeah. I have not... We have one from YouTube. I haven't read it, so if it's controversial, I'm sorry. Uh, does Andy believe the brand name FileMaker has become detrimental over time? What prevents the Claris brand from being the same? Um, I do. Uh, I do that based on uh, actual research and lots of customer uh, communications. You know, I'm very proudly a, a career FileMaker guy, right? I'm I'm Mr. FileMaker. Good God. I started in college 34 years ago and I'm still here and I've been with the company. I've been a developer. I've been I've done everything you can do with this platform and I love it. So it, it's not for any lack of love for the brand and the platform. But, you know, when we talk to customers, the FileMaker brand is seen as, you know, older, stodgier. A lot of people have experiences with it that's decades old and don't understand what it can do today. Um, you get a lot of responses like FileMaker that's still around or yes. FileMaker. That, yeah, you get that one too. Yeah, it's a toy, right? And so we, we know that um, in the era where FileMaker had no competition, right? Nobody was doing loco but us. We, we let the brand go stale. And so going back to Claris is really a reset button. We believe that we can build some energy around the Claris brand. I know it's confusing right now in the transition with you know, the FileMaker platform to a Claris branded platform, but 
uh, emphasizing Claris and the power of what this community delivers with it. Uh, more and more, yeah, we, we, we believe that the brand can be very strong and we will invest in it. We don't, we intend to not let it go stale. So. Right. Real quick, I, I want to point out that uh, uh, Ruben just commented back about your comments about the enterprise. And I, I think this gets back to me pushing for increased communications, both with yourself and people above your level, Andy. And he goes, yes, there's a lot of opportunity in the enterprise. It's good to hear that it's on Claris's radar. Okay, I'm going to be very explicit here about this. He's not talking about me, my radar. He's talking about Andy, Andy reflecting what Claris is thinking. Um, there's a lot of opportunity. There's always has been. I think it's just getting the right messaging there and getting that executed and communicated all the way through the developers, getting the developers to sing the same song as Claris or getting Claris to sing the same song from developers. I'm not sure which way the, the dog wags the tail, but if we're all singing from the same sheet of music, it makes things much easier. So, for sure. Cool. Yeah, no doubt. There's nobody above me, Richard, by the way. I, I don't know what that comment was, but uh, there's nobody above my pay grade at Claris. Only okay, you, so, you well, well, no, it's just, it's just that, uh, well, I, you said you had every job at Claris, and the snarky part of me was going, well, maybe, uh, you know, then I guess you've been the CEO once or twice, but yeah, no, it's, um, I'm messing with you. I had a great chat with Brad. We talked about Oh, but I can, I can yell at him and get away with it. That does happen, so it's all yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I had a great chat with uh, Brad, the CEO of Claris last week, and he's, he's so a busy guy but him providing when he says the same things that andy says um and i know that everyone assumes that to be the case but sometimes you get in organizations where the right and left hands don't talk um getting that all the team to sing the same thing the same way it's reassuring to me that it's being handled well at apple if that makes any sense it gives me confidence to say we're, yeah. we're trying we're, we're trying it's hard because we also have, you know, a lot of employees that have been around the platform as long as many of you in the audience here have, right, that have been here for decades. And, you know, like one of the branding challenges that we have is, you know, we want to get to a place where we're emphasizing Claris. You know, when you go to some of our competitors, uh, I don't know, pick uh, Appian or Airtable, right? You don't go to the app store for iOS and buy Airtable Go. You don't go buy Airtable Server or Airtable Cloud. You just buy Airtable anytime you're interacting with that platform. Um, and many platforms are like that. But we came from an era where we named every little thing in the platform. And so now we're, we're going to a place where we've got this hybrid model, on-prem, augmented by cloud capabilities platform that the architecture of it is very complex and we have an instinct to want to name everything, right? And um, I think the challenge that's happening right now is because of that, we we have a thing called Claris Studio, a thing called Claris Connect, a thing called Pro. And then we start thinking about, well, there still is Claris Server, Claris Go, Claris, you know, yada, yada, yada. It's just Claris. And one day we will think of it as just Claris. Um, I, I don't know that we will even distinguish Studio and, and Connect someday, right? Right now we do because the tool sets are separate. But um, I think the confusion it causes, um, you know, I that could, we think of them as separate products is is something that we need to fix, right? I, these are things made to be a tool set. So. I think I agree with you. I think at least I think in terms of like the cloud centric parts of it, I think those could be easily d put into a box and called one thing and people would get used to that. Um, part of the benefit to the platform, <laughs> Part of the negative to the platform is you have this huge group of, I will call, institutional developers. We've been around for many, many, many years. I've been doing it 33. You've been doing it 34, Andy. A lot of people here have been doing it before I did. And and the issue is that we're great. We're powerful. We're a motivated force to help promote the platform. But we remember the products being called the old thing, right? And so yeah. if we get past calling it FileMaker, whatever's on the shirt, to Clarist, but then we call it pro. Well, yeah, so there's going to be part of this is a negative, but part of it's a positive because you've got this installed group of customers who believe and love the product. We have to Correct. try to wrap their heads around this. So it's a kind of double-edged sword thing, right? Good and bad, both. Correct. It's it's all about context, right? And and uh, we have this comfort space. And so I think where I started you know, talking about this went to, we have internal employees that wrestle with the the brand transition and 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 what I would call it evolution, uh, just as much as as y'all do. So um, to your comment about trying to be consistent in the org, 
it's a challenge and that's my job. Um, and I, I fight with it every day. So we'll, we'll try and be the best we can I know that this has been confusing this year, but um, I think we're getting more clarity and I'm seeing more confidence and more consistency come back from the community as well. And we do listen, Richard, we listen a lot. So um, that's a good sign for me. No, I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Questions, people, Margaret, you I'm not watching YouTube. I'm not watching Twitch. Uh, uh Kim yeah, just I'll, I'll read Bears and you can check the other ones. Are there any plans to have homegrown cloud Amazon services hosted on private servers, i.e., government hardware? Can Bear, so can Bear, once again, I'm going to rephrase this for everyone. Can Bear is from Sandia Labs, which is tightly integrated with the U.S. government, and they probably are accessing the Amazon data centers that are part of the restricted government region, I guess. Can Bear, I don't have any experience with that, right? Uh, yep. I, I imagine the answer is I, I'm an optimist. And so to me, it's never yes or no. It's when um, <clears throat> I think it, I, I think it would be difficult for us not to um, to support uh, government cloud. And um, because we have just so much uh, usage of the platform in, in many government uh, agencies, organizations and, and, and more. So I, I think it will get there. Um, is it in the immediate horizon? I think we got some other things we have to knock down first. Uh, so I, I don't know if I go so far as to say we're planning yet, but uh, I would be shocked uh, that we don't get there. So. Yeah, don't get there. Cool. Uh, Google Firestore. <laughs> yeah, he's a response to Ken Bears. We don't use Amazon servers. Yeah, the, some of the people are talking back and forth on Discord. So, all right, Margaret, YouTube and uh, Twitch. Nothing at the moment, actually. So, so Alpha Lima. I I one, one question in there. Um, I saw one myself, Richard. At, um, oh, Monkey Bread. Uh, sorry, Christian asked about uh, limits on freemium. Um, I, we'll communicate this probably more crisply uh, as as we get closer to releasing it. But our, our goal is it, to, to have as little limit as possible. I think what Pete said back in April, we we are, you know, we believe in uh, that we want people to be able to explore the platform, get as much value out as they can, not, you know, run into walls everywhere to figure out what they can do with Claris. Um, and so I, I think we'll probably limit on number of users. I think Pete talked about, you know, when you get to the point of deployment in business value. So there'd probably be a limit on, on, you know, a developer and some testing capability. Um, and, but like in terms of just kicking you in the shins as many times as we can with row record limits and, and those kinds of things, I think we're going to try and be out of the gate, probably more, what's the word? Um, I don't know sounds political, but it's not liberally minded. Like we'd rather give more than less and get it out in there and see what people do with it. And then there's under, kind of understand where the baselines are and where the edge cases are so that we can form limits that make sense over time uh, for our customer base. So yeah, less, we'll less, less friction is what I'm pushing for. Um, and that's uh, exactly the, the thing. Thank you. You've said it in two words. And, and yeah, I, 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 I didn't like, want to interrupt you because you were going to, you're so much better of a wordsmith. I figured you'd have something better than frictionless, but you yeah. You proved me wrong, man. No, <laughs> I, I, I had a wordsmithing moment by accident. So, real quick. Oh, so, so everyone understands, understand the messaging. So, we've, we've, we've talked, I've been here with the live stream with you doing training for like 10 years, and some of you have been watching me for a long time. Um, and so, the idea is that the FileMaker platform, we had this peer-to-peer -peer thing. And, and back in the old days, back in early in FileMaker 2 days, peer-to-peer -peer was the only way to share data. We're talking 19, shoot, 92, 30 years ago, right? And it had mm -hmm. a limit of like 25 people. And then the very first server came out, and that was another beer bet between a couple engineers. Over the weekend, they went home and said, well, I could take this and build it into a server, right? And that was um, uh, uh, Krim right and so one of these engineers who's since retired and so we get this server thing and since that time the peer-to-peer -peer has slowly been been turned off and shut down and for good reason it doesn't provide encryption doesn't provide automatic backups the idea from my perspective and a messaging perspective for all of you and i'm not really talking to andy because we're on the same page on this is that it's it's if you were going to use filemaker claris whatever we call this platform claris filemaker um, I said the F word, Andy, by the way, if you, Andy, if you say an F word today, right, I don't know if you could see this, <laughs> right? If you say FileMaker, you owe a dollar. Oh, there it goes. So yeah, I have to put a hundred dollars in here at a time because I blow it so much. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, the, the, the idea was that, that, that to, 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 as soon as people need to share it collaboratively, put some money into it, get the server, 
the peer to peer kind of goes away is ideally for me. And then, so people can use it individually, start training, get the value. And, every, and, and a lot of organizations, a lot of you are this way. I've talked to you about stories where you've come to me and said, yeah, I was building this. And then over the quarter, some of the desk or cubicle or office, someone said, wow, that's really great. Can I use that too? And then I gave them a copy and then there's two copies, but can't we share this data? Then it goes on a server before long, your little project to help your own little job takes off mm -hmm. and off you're running and then you have five or ten people connected and that's really when you start sharing collaboratively that's the high value that's where frankly we should be wanting to pay claris here's our money take our money right it's that joke up me take my money right that's what we want right <laughs> and it makes it easy conversation it's yourself no, you're, you're right the, the interesting friction that's in there is that you need to deploy bits for server right and so that's part of the rationale behind studio over time, right? Like right now, it's not like studio is not there yet. Right now, our focus on studio is to rationalize it for customers who are using FileMaker, right? Use yeah. the Claris platform and extending on it now with new capabilities. But once we get all the widgets, all the sort of composable objects in there, we make it extensible by developers. It's programmable. You can get in there and do scripting and whatnot. Um, at that point, then maybe you start with the first spreadsheet, right? You you put your spreadsheet view in there, you collaborate on it with your teams, you start building views around it, you start building workflows around it, you start doing automations. Suddenly you have the thing you want to share, Richard, right? You have an experience and you want to share it and you don't have to deploy bits. You just have to say, okay, I'm going to, here's my credit card, I'll add five people and let's go to town, right? And then you decide, oh, well, we really need to take this offline and, and build something more robust and you you know, enjoying the FileMaker, you know, or Claris Pro uh, app to uh, start doing that. I yeah, the, dollar. the exact sequ you know, for me, it's kind of, I could, I could talk about it intellectually, right? But studio yet someone, you know, it was an email that was shot around and someone was asking me, what's my aha moment yet where I just have to have a studio and it's not quite there. I think in January or maybe sometime early this next year, there'll be a feature in studio that I have to have. But a couple of times I've been really pleasantly surprise what steve jobs you see um what did he say he would be surprised and delighted surprised and delighted were the two words that steve jobs would use and i was playing with studio and it had the signature capture built in and and i never in a million years thought claris would do that right because they've avoided it for a million years with pro it just doesn't exist so suddenly it's in studio i'm like i was ex i was delighted and surprised and so if they keep doing that eventually i will want to use studio and then it's going to be this like challenge to figure out you know god i have to have that i got to use pro you're going to get me to be a con convert andy's what will happen right so i'm looking well, you know what when i started and i don't think i'm dissimilar from a lot of folks in the community um i know there are some folks in the community that sort of started out as uh, as coders or as, as cs people i didn't i was a business major and i was trying to pay money through college with a summer job and i was given uh you know filemaker and i didn't know anything about data modeling and you know, the first time uh, I went through a training about r relational and, and putting two tables together, I, I couldn't get it. It took me like a week to figure it out. I, it, you know, I think with Studio, we have an opportunity to uh, embrace a community of potential developers, right, to into a platform where they start working with data, understanding its value, how they can sort of build, you know, business workflows around it more and uh, and build this community and grow it up again. So, yeah. If reducing friction to adoption is in part about the availability of, of cloud, it's also in part about building a, a, a surprising and delightful user experience so more people can get in on this action, right? Yeah, yeah, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, okay, so in tech, our next tech asked a question. Hey, Andy, I'm going to read this for you, Andy. So, uh, hey, Andy, uh, currently for the last six months or so, we have not been able to update our apps on the app store uh i'm assuming this ios apps do we know if the next uh, update coming will fix this issue is the ios app sdk part of the release coming up in the next few weeks question mark um and i i saw this question asked at least three times uh so thank you for for your persistence i apologize i don't know the answer to it right now uh but i will take it back and uh, see what we can find out um I don't know if I'm going to get it today, but I'll do what I can. <laughs> so I apologize. Well, if you, if you back channel it to us, we can do announcements on it and thread it into the conversation next week. So, um, right cool. Or just let people know. All right. I'm other grabbing a screenshot. So I have a yeah. to do item when we hang up here. 
Yeah, yeah, no, this is great. Uh, are there any uh, future ideas of a workflow builder or a script space for Clara Studio? And that's a great question because that's because where does Clara Studio really go? Because the one thing I would yeah. point out, someone asked me the other day, Richard, would you build a solution in Clara Studio? I said, well, if I if I spent a hundred hours and build something in Clara Studio, understand that today, right now, I'm not picking on Andy in any way, but I, there's no save as like compile it or take it out, then let me take it to a different customer or recycle mm -hmm. it or sell it. So where does this go, Andy? What, what, how much can you tell us? What is your vision? Well, I can make up stuff all day long, right? I can imagine <laughs> things. Um, so, um, but uh, I, I think the answer to the question is yes. Um, there's got to be developer programmability in that. Our, our platform, our reason to be is to help developers solve hard problems that matter. And if we can't build custom things, uh, we're not doing that right, right? So we're just, we, we have to build in the capabilities to not just build a one-way form to dump data into a repository that one could consume in FileMaker, but we need to be able to build experiences and they need to be custom. So I'm imagining, um, I think already we have, I believe, the, uh, the object visibility in Studio. And you see in there the beginnings of some logical controls that allow you to determine, you know, base, you can base some, basically make branching, right, in, in you know, your form with it. Um, but that's just at the beginning, right? We think of that engine as, as a way that we can sort of combine the capabilities of um, uh, transformational programming, i.e. a calculation engine, and procedural programming, i.e., a script, you know, capability. Um, I, I think it'll it's it's a certainty that we will have that kind of automation. Further, I believe in the long run, and I want to promise this like it's coming next month. But in the long run, um, you know, we're going to have the ability for developers to customize and build things as well. Um, think about what we've been doing with FileMaker with add-ons, right? There's only so many layout types and objects that we can build, and uh, with add-ons, you know, developers can satisfy for many more types of objects and controls. In Connect, I know we promised, and it's been a long time coming, but we're going to add the capabilities for developers to build connectors that they need that we can't provide. It is impossible for Claris to provide all of the connectors that the known world could possibly want. There is a long tail there where there are some connectors that are going to be useful to a very small community. Claris could not possibly invest in that, but a developer could and serve that community. And I think the same will apply to Studio. We can build Kanban boards and, and you know, different views all day long, but can we provide all of the views, all the components that the world could possibly want? I don't think so. So I, I think over time, um, if, if the question behind the question is how programmable will Studio get, I think it will get rather programmable uh, and developers will want to use it. So. Which is great. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear that, I mean, I, I you're I'm gonna be demanding to have it. I'm fighting for it anyway. So there you go. <laughs> so Ruben says once again, good to hear my confidence in Claris is growing again. On while you're talking about the uh if then act they call it the action engine. I'm good with that title, right? The action engine was on screen mm -hmm. here while you were babbling about that. But yeah, so there we go. They're on their best behavior. <laughs> See, that's the problem with this, because about the time that something someone posts a not safe for work graphic on live TV and then derails your brain and whatever you're trying to say, it gets blown up. Uh, Stu says any estimate on concurrent license will be available on the Claris platform, I'm assuming. Uh, no estimate on that. We've got a lot of uh, a lot of work going on around licensing in general for Claris. Um, well, you need you know, a right now. Yeah, you need a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, we totally need a lot. We there's a lot we need for SBA. There's a lot we need for Claris when it stands on its own. Right now, the Claris license is available with a FileMaker license. We believe that's the right thing to do right now. Yes. Um, and we're you know squarely focused on our existing customer base. Um, at some point, you know, you'll have to experience, you'll have, we'll have to provide for a customer that comes in, experiences studio, wants to buy into the platform, you know, enjoy the rest and doesn't come from a FileMaker background and, and have those things figured out. But uh, we're working on it hard, but no announcements uh, on that one today. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a, I, I, and when I, when I thank you for coming in today, so let me, so as we land the airplane, this is your captain speaking, please return your chairs to the upright position, your trade tables up. So uh, real quick, uh, in summary, so A, 
Andy, thank you for coming. You see the interaction with Ruben. You see the inter interaction with Next Tech, with Monkey Bread. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of people here that are lurking and a ton more that will watch this in a recording. I get emails from people all the time about this. So but so in terms of news, uh, uh, Claris is not asleep at the switch. They seem to be coherent and doing a great job in where they're going. Um, there's an update coming out for 19, whatever the next one is. I guess it's dot six. Um, yep. at some point, right, in the future, but we don't have it yet. And yeah, keep I would your eyes open. If you don't hear about it the week after the holiday, the week after next, it would be shocking to me. Uh, I think we're all locked and loaded and ready to go there. So excited to yeah. get that out. And that, that will be Thank after you. Thanksgiving here. For those of you who are not in the U.S., uh, they'll be off next week. And then, mm -hmm. uh, then, then it's a race to the end of the year. And then Claris is an Apple are off for two weeks at the end. If you have questions, yep. or comments, or ideas for topics next week, next week we have two days on the newest add-ons, uh, Andy, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we have this awesome. pack add-on where a bunch of the people in this community throw together these add-ons into a single kind of drag and drop installer and it walks them and then they just kind of do this thing. So the latest add-ons. Mm -hmm. For FileMaker 19, that'll be Monday, Tuesday. Then we're off on the live stream Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We'll be having some Turkey Day time off. So I want to thank Good everyone, for everyone being here. And Andy, uh, appreciate you coming out and being part of this. It really, I can say the things that you say, but no one believes me because I'm a lying weasel. But if you say them, it means a lot more, right? So. I, I I try not to be a lying weasel, and I go back to headquarters and yell at people that make it not a lie. That's my job. Like, right? hey, you've been hanging out with uh -huh. Richard way too much, right? So yeah, way too much. No, I, I always appreciate you having me, mate. It's it's always fun to be here, Margaret. It's great to see you again. It's great to meet you in person. Um, a yes, couple weeks ago. Right? So. I'm sorry for the cat problems. And yeah, sorry for the cats on the keyboard. Sure, at, least, sure. at least we weren't disconnected from the TV show. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, we'll catch you uh, next Monday for add-ons and FileMaker day one of two days, Monday, Tuesday, next week. I'll see you. See ya. Thanks, so. FileMaker license, uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir. Oh, you